At the end of the Second World War, the Red Army fielded huge quantities of submachine guns, more than any other military of the conflict at the time. As originally designed, the Aftermath Kalashnikova, or AK, rifle was conceived as a submachine gun, and the standard issue rifle of the Red Army from 1945 onwards was to be the SKS self-loading rifle. It wouldn't be until the 1960s, with the introduction of the AKM, that the assault rifle became the standard arm of Soviet infantry. In contrast, many Western armies would hold on to their submachine guns until the 1980s and early 1990s. A few tenders for a new submachine gun were issued in the 1970s and yielded developments such as the OTS-02 Kiparis, primarily intended for Spetsnaz use, but were not adopted at the time. The Army's needs for a compact personal defence weapon were generally met by the AKS-74U assault rifle. The political and economic instability of the 1990s in Russia would lead to an upsurge of violent organised crime. This sparked a sort of renaissance in Russian submachine gun design, driven by requests from law enforcement special operations forces. This would lead to a plethora of interesting and novel designs from just about every single major small arms manufacturer in the country. The money would see adoption by units of the MVD, the Ministry of the Internal Affair. Few were actually adopted by the armed forces, outside of small batches for special forces and clandestine units. The latest submachine gun to enter military service, specifically in the National Guard, is the PP1901SN, more commonly known as the Vityaz. The Vityaz itself was developed from the early PP19 Bison. The Bison was built on a shortened AKS 74U receiver, and as a result retained the ergonomics and familiarity of the AK platform. Chambered originally for the 9x18 Makarov, Cartridge, the Bison boasted a novel high capacity 64 round helical drum magazine. Said magazine proved to be problematic, however, with noted issues around reliability and weight. The PP1901 was developed in the early 2000s at the request of a law enforcement special operations unit. The helical magazine was abandoned in favour of a traditional curved box magazine, which are considered to be more reliable and easier to carry in webbing or magazine pouches. Like its predecessor, the Vityaz retains the ergonomics of the Kalashnikov rifle, greatly simplifying training between the two weapons. The Vityaz is a select fire weapon, blowback operated, and chambered for the 9x19 cartridge. Its effective range is around 150 meters, and the weapon can be fitted with a sound suppressor unit. The submachine gun is very much treated as a specialist weapon in the Russian armed forces, and there are currently no known plans to further procure large quantities of weapons of this type. Assault Rifles The Soviet Union would begin development of a new intermediate rifle cartridge based on its learnings of the US donated M1 carbine, chambered for the 30 carbine round, and captured German NKB-42 assault rifles, what would later be known as the Sturmgewehr 44. The goal was to develop a new family of weapons chambered for this new cartridge. These would be the SKF self-loading rifle, the RPD light machine gun, and the AK assault rifle. By 1946, Mikhail Kalashnikov had submitted his AK-46 design for trials. This design was refined into the AK-47, and by 1949 it was adopted as the Aftermath Kalashnikova, or simply AK. Early models were constructed around a stamped steel receiver that proved unsatisfactory and yielded a high rejection rate at factory levels. By 1951, production had switched to a new milled receiver, with a further improved model introduced in 1957. By 1955, a new requirement for a new family of weapons to replace the AK and RPD light machine gun was issued. This would lead to the adoption in 1959 of the AKM and the RPK. Aside from some mechanical redesigns, the major feature of the AKM was the reintroduction of a stamped steel receiver, greatly reducing production time and costs of the new rifles compared to the milled AKs. By the 1960s onwards, the AKM would begin to supplant the SKS and become the standard rifle of the Red Army. By the mid-1960s, the Soviet Union was examining the concept of a small diameter, low impulse, high velocity round, similar in many ways to that of the 5.56 that had been developed for the American M16. 
This would lead to the official military adoption of the 545 by 39 cartridge. And in 1966, a requirement was issued for a new family of infantry small arms chambered for this round. The trials would see a number of advanced designs tested. However, in the end, Kalashnikov's A3 would be selected in 1974, becoming the AK-74. The AK-74 was essentially a scaled-down AKM, though many parts are not interchangeable. It did simplify production and training. The AK-74 can be distinguished by its prominent cylindrical muzzle brake. Early versions of the rifle were fitted with wooden handguards and stocks with the distinctive plum-coloured polymer furniture being introduced by 1984. A compact version of the AK-74, known as the AK-74U, was introduced in 1979. This rifle was primarily issued to vehicle crews and special forces units. By the mid-1980s, a new requirement was issued for an integrally suppressed assault rifle to be issued to reconnaissance units and special units. Before that, these units often had to employ older AKM rifles issued with subsonic ammunition and PBS-1 suppressors. The subsonic ammunition did not generate sufficient pressure to cycle the AKM, therefore turning it into a de facto bolt-action rifle. Designed by Tinotmash, the AS Val and its sniper rifle counterpart, the VSS Vintores, are chambered for the unique 9x39 SP5 and SP6 subsonic armour-piercing rounds. The Val retains some of the ergonomics and controls layout of the AK, but features a short-stroke gas piston instead of a long-stroke piston. The integral suppressor of the rifle can be removed for maintenance, but, it's, but it is otherwise intended to stay on at all times. In 1979, yet another project was initiated to develop and procure a new service rifle. Known as Project Abakan, it aimed at developing a rifle that offered substantially improved hit probabilities with each trigger pull generally in the form of controlled automatic bursts. Two main prototypes were presented, the AEK-971 and the Nikonov ASM. The AEK-971 utilised a balanced recoil system, consisting of a moving counterweight arrangement designed to mitigate muzzle rise during bursts of fire. The rifle would end up losing the Abacan trials, but development would continue until it would evolve into the A545 rifle. The Nikonov ASM was selected for further development in 1991, however the design would not mature until 1997 when it was adopted as the AN-94. Utilising a complex system of operation, consisting of both a long stroke gas piston and short recoil operation, the AN-94's particularity was offering a two round hyperburst. The mechanically limited two round burst would fire rounds in very quick succession, in order of 1000 rounds per minute within the burst before the felt recoil would reach the shooter's shoulder. The mechanical complexity, cost and reliability issues of the rifle meant that it was only adopted in very small numbers by Special Operations Forces. With the economic hardships of the early 1990s biting in, and with the development of the AN-94 taking longer than expected, the Russian Armed Forces sought a more cost-effective solution by simply upgrading their fleet of AK-74s. The resulting AK-74M was a relatively minor upgrade, introducing new black coloured polymer furniture, including a new side folding so stock. The rifles were fitted with a sag mounted scope rail as standard, though optics such as the 1P29 were never issued in great numbers. As of today, the AK-74M remains the primary service rifle of the Russian Armed Forces. In 2013, the Russian Ministry of Defence launched the Ratnik programme aimed at revamping Russian infantry equipment, including new uniforms, body armour and small arms. By 2018, the AK-12 and the A-545 rifles had been selected for the programme. On to new arrivals in the assault rifle category. Originally developed in 2011 as a private initiative by Zhvesk, the current production AK-12 has evolved quite a bit from its original iterations, having reportedly failed the Ratnik trials in 2015. The current revised model was unveiled in 2016. At its core, the AK-12 is a traditional Kalashnikov, a stamp steel receiver, long stroke gas piston operated and chambered for the 5.45 by 39 cartridge. The main innovation comes in bringing the AK platform to current Western standards of ergonomics and modularity. Main changes include new furniture featuring lengths of Picatinny rails, a new gas block for increased ease of maintenance, a new finger operable selector plate, and a new side folding and length adjustable stock. 
the receiver cover has been redesigned to incorporate an integrated optics rail with a new locking mechanism to guarantee that the mounted optics are able to retain zero correctly. An estimated 400,000 AK-12s and its 7.62 chambered counterpart, the AK-15, will be acquired by the Russian Armed Forces. A very small number of A545 and A762 rifles, chambered for 545 and 762 cartridges respectively, will also be acquired in 2018. The cords, as the rifles have been named, are the final evolution of the AEK-971 and AEK-973 we mentioned in the previous slide. They retain their unique balanced recoil system of operation, allowing for excellent controllability when firing in bursts of automatic fire. The higher complexity of these weapons mean that, means that they will be earmarked for use by Spetsnaz units only, specifically those belonging to the VDV, Russia's airborne formation. At least 6,000 AK-74-74Ms will be upgraded with the KMK Obvious kits in the coming years, bringing the rifle in line with the AK-200 series. These kits include a side folding and length adjustable stock, new handguards fitted with length of Picatinny rail, a new finger operable selector plate, a new optics rail fitted over the receiver cover, and an AK-200 style muzzle device. With potentially millions of AK-74 and 74Ms in storage, the KMAK kit represents a cost-effective way of rapidly modernizing the legacy stocks, should the need arise. 2018 also saw the introduction of the ASM, the modernized version of the AS VAL. The upgrade is relatively minor, once again with an emphasis on greater modularity and improved ergonomics. The receiver cover now features an integrated optics rail, and the new forend that features links of Picatinny rail for mounting grip, grips and laser light modules. Finally, a very small number of ADS dual medium rifles are thought to have entered service with Naval Special Operations Units and combat divers. Based on the A91M assault rifle, the ADS is the replacement for the previous APS underwater rifle. The APS fired special dart-like super cavitating projectiles for use underwater, but was relatively ineffective in atmospheric conditions. The ADS is gas operated and can function both underwater and in atmosphere by simply switching the setting on the gas regulator. Chambered for 545 by 39 special SPS rounds can be used for underwater applications, giving the rifle a reported 25 meter range at a 5 meter depth.